So after five months of solid riding, today I'll be reviewing my 2019 Cannondale Jekyll Carbon 3 29er. So if you're new to this channel, Long and Winding is all about bringing the tales from the trails here in Victoria, Australia. So from time to time I do do reviews and this is one of them. If you're interested in all the sweet riding there is to be done in Victoria, Australia, I'd encourage you to hit subscribe so future videos of mine come up in your feed. So I've ridden the Jekyll in all kinds of terrain and circumstances from full on gravity racing like uh, the A-bomb downhill at Mount Bolola and also the Mount Bolola gravity enduro to jumps like the ones I was hitting on the peninsula or even the small ones at Quarry Park to more regular trail riding. So let's take a look at the bike. So the Jekyll is designed for aggressive trail riding and gravity and it most certainly is a gravity bike. To me, this is not the kind of bike uh, you'd take out to your regular trail ride in Victoria. To me, there just isn't enough challenging terrain out there to really push this bike to its limits. You have to really seek out those corners of Victoria um, that this bike really excels in. So just a quick recap on the geometry numbers. If you want a more detailed breakdown of these numbers, check out my bike check video from when I first got this bike. Probably the only thing that really stood out was the high bottom bracket and I'm gonna talk about how that affected the ride later. So this is a 150 mil travel bike front and rear. That amount of travel coupled with the 29 inch wheels uh, makes for a bike that can pretty much boost over anything. This thing is an absolute monster on the trail and once you start to point things down, that's where the Jekyll really, really excels. Which makes sense, it is a gravity bike. However, Cannondale do give you options. There is the Gemini remote system. So with the lever in flow mode, you've got the full 150 mil of travel at your disposal. But then putting into hustle mode really firms up the suspension and gives you uh, 120 mils of travel. I'll talk a bit about how this affects the ride a little later on. So the 2019 Jekyll Carbon 3 is pretty much at the entry level of Cannondale's lineup and you're probably looking at about 6k retail for this. And if you're looking at the 2020 model, these specs are really quite similar to the 2019, so this review will be quite relevant to you. So let's look at the spec and how everything fared on the bike over the last five months. So looking at the frame, I found the frame is super stiff and the bike isn't like crazy heavy, it's about 15 kilo. And there's also a bit of room in the front triangle to strap a tube and canister in case of emergency. So looking at the wheels, we've got the Stans S1 rim, which from a width perspective, I really rated. However, these rims are not indestructible and on one of my first rides on the bike, I actually dented uh, my rear stance S1 rim really badly. What's crazy is that I didn't flat and the tubeless seal didn't break. And I was able to actually continue riding the bike with this big old dent in the rear rim. Fast forward to Buller Bike Fest, and when I had that crash, I had that really bad flat in the rear wheel, and since then, I haven't been able to seal the rear tire, so I just had to whack a tube in it and get on with it. At the moment, it's looking like a replacement rear wheel will be about 400 bucks. And that seems like about the cheapest way to get tubeless happening in, which is not really that cheap. Other than the rims, the hubs seem fine and spokes fine. The weight of these wheels isn't crazy. They could be a little lighter, but this is an entry level bike, so you gotta cut out some slack. And the tires, the Maxxis Minions. I mean, I think just about everyone knows how awesome these tires are. Super grippy, really puncture resistant, and a really nice stiff sidewall. All that coupled with the 29 inch wheels means loads of traction through corners, smashing through rock gardens, and loads of extra confidence when it comes to jumping. I don't love the feel of the SRAM Guide Rs. I feel like you're kind of either a SRAM brake person or a Shimano brake person. I have Shimano XT on my scalpel cross country bike and I really like the positive firm feel of those brakes. Moving to the kind of mushy, spongy feel of the Guide Rs didn't really float my boat. And I also felt like the brakes were probably a little bit underpowered for four pot brakes. Again, this is a pretty entry level uh, enduro bike and the brakes are good enough. I'm just kind of getting a bit nitpicky. If any of you watched the Bike Buller Fest video, you'll know that during the outlaw stage, uh, my rear brake caliper actually came loose off the bike. So I had no rear brake and I was careering down the spire road. Luckily, I got away with just a flat tire 
and a really bad time. So if you are looking to buy this bike, um, keep a really close eye on the rear brake uh, and how well it's actually attached to the frame because even after putting new bolts in there, it's since come loose again. Which to me is just crazy. I mean, I'm gonna have to put some Loctite in there or something to keep the bolts in. But that's never happened. The forks I love, they are super stiff, loads of travel and literally plow through everything. And the SRAM GX dry train uh, really rocks, I love it. Super precise and crisp shifting. I mean, doesn't everyone say that in a bike review that the Eagle drive trains just perform really well? So in terms of contact points, the bar and stem I love. Stem is a great length, bars, perfect width, and the rise and sweep seem great. The dropper post so far seems fine, and the saddle's comfy enough. So now let's look at the ride. I'm gonna talk about what I love first of all. So I went for a small frame with this Jekyll and I think it was the right move. I really like the maneuverability of it and it just means it's a little more applicable in the air and through tight corners. The front and rear suspension is awesome, totally confidence inspiring and it's awesome for big hits uh, and through rock gardens. Being a gravity bike, as soon as you pointed this thing down, it really, really excelled. In terms of going up, I think the Jekyll performs pretty well for a gravity bike. I actually found that the suspension and the big tires enabled me to climb uh, more technical climbs that I probably couldn't have on my cross country bike, which is cool. I actually like the high bottom bracket for its clearance through rock gardens and riding trails. And I found the pedal efficiency pretty good, except when I really wanted to lay down the power in a race like at the Gravity Enduro. When you go to sprint on this bike, it does tend to feel like a bit of a mattress. And you can say, hey, just put it in hustle mode and firm up the suspension. But when you're in a gravity race uh, and you're trying to sprint out of a corner, you just don't have time to reach down uh, and push the lever into hustle mode. And that leads me into what I didn't like about the ride. So like I said, the Gemini system on paper sounds great, but when it comes to like a racing environment or a technical trail riding environment, between the dropper and the Gemini system, there are just too many levers to be pushing all the time. It just takes too much time and headspace to be keeping on top of what lever is in what position. So I actually found myself leaving the Gemini system in the flow mode, which is the full 150 mils of travel. And then if I wanted to look at the suspension uh, during like a five road climb, I had the time and the headspace. I just reached down the shock and the fork and literally pulled the levers into their locked out position. And that gives you way better pedaling efficiency anyway, since the suspension is almost completely locked out. Another thing I noticed uh, with the Gemini system is that if you did find time to put it into hustle mode, uh, there was a significant loss in traction. So the firming up of the suspension means less traction on the ground. And this actually caught me out during an enduro race where I almost crashed because of a loss of traction uh, after putting it into hustle mode. From then on, it just wasn't worth thinking about and I left it in flow mode. Another thing is the small bump sensitivity, uh, mostly in the rear, wasn't actually great. I don't think this is down to suspension setup because I got this bike set up uh, at the bike shop that I bought it from. I just noticed that when you're on gravel roads or you're riding on the trail, you get a lot of feedback through the saddle, especially out back. Another thing I didn't love about this bike was that it's probably a bit short. I did get a size small, but I would have loved it to be just a bit longer. Sometimes I just feel a little bit cramped on this bike and I feel like I'm more likely to go over the bars on a shorter bike than I am on a longer bike. That said, at high speed, this thing was really super stable and being short does have its advantages like jumping and tight cornering. So to conclude, I do love my Jekyll. Full disclosure, it is the first gravity bike I've owned recently, although I have ridden uh, the Canyon Stripe before at Medina Bike Park. To me, this is definitely a bike you want to be pointing downhill on the regular. It's not really the kind of bike you would take out to your regular cross-country trail center because to me, it's kind of overkill for that. The trail this bike got pushed to its limits the most on was the A-bomb downhill at Mount Buller. And I actually feel like it was the perfect bike for that trail. So that gives you a bit of an idea around what this bike's designed for. That was a full-on downhill race run. I think this is the perfect bike for enduro racing and even a bit of downhill. And I can't wait to take this bike to Derby and Medina. But I'm just not quite convinced by the Gemini system yet. Maybe if you're trail riding in BC, it would make more sense to switch between the hustle and flow modes. But to me, it's just still too many levers. I like a nice clean cockpit. I don't want to have to constantly be pushing levers in and out because I really want to focus on the trail. I do have the luxury of having a cross-country bike for regular trail riding. And if this was my only bike, I would probably put my time into getting used to the hustle and flow mode lever. So don't rule it out, it just probably wasn't quite for me. 
If this video was useful for you, please hit the like button and please let me know if I've missed anything in the comments. Thanks so much for watching folks. Like I said before, I really love this bike. I'm really glad I bought it. You're never gonna have the one bike that does everything super well. For me, this bike is all about going down hills really fast on really rough technical terrain. And for that, it really excels and I absolutely love it. All right, well that wraps everything up. Thanks so much everyone for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Stay safe. I hope you get out of ISO sooner rather than later and I'll see you soon. Ciao.